Would you like to play City Skylines without running out of money? Are you frustrated because your cities get choked with traffic? Hi, I'm Lee, and in this episode of More Money, Less Traffic, I'll show you how to start a city without breaking your bank account. So here we are on the Seven Lakes map that comes with the Mass Transit DLC. And with this city, I'm starting out a little differently than most tutorials. Rather than building out from the highway, this city follows a plan I introduced in my previous video on city layout. That plan extends for an entire square mile, and it's all centered around the intersection of Main Avenue and Broadway right here. If you missed that video, please click above so you can find out what the layout is, how I came up with it, and why we're not building from the highway over here. Now I skipped the part where I played around to get the precise alignment of Main Avenue. The idea I had though was to align it roughly with the shoreline of Prospect Lake here and Spring Lake here, with plenty of space for a parallel street to run along either side of Main Avenue without running into a shoreline inside my plan area. To save everyone from having to tinker around to find the alignment of Main Avenue and the location of Broadway, I'll upload this starter map to the Steam Workshop for those of you who would like to follow along throughout the series. This tutorial has two goals. Build everything we need to get our first residents to move in, and save as much money as we can in the process. At the end, we'll have enough to reach our first milestone at a population of 380, and we'll have a huge pile of credits. Our first financial lesson is really simple though. Pause the game before we build. As soon as we build anything that requires maintenance, like roads, we get charged for upkeep, like you see at the bottom of the screen here. So pause the game right away, or we'll bleed cash before we have income. How do we get income? Well, we need residents to move in and pay taxes. And until we do a few basic things, residents won't move in, or at least they won't stay. And in City Skylines, those residents are called Sims. And that's with a C, not an S, because it's not like we're playing a game from some other developer here. Anyway, back to saving money. Our last video unveiled a plan, but we aren't going to build everything in it right away. That's because we're going to save money by using lean construction methodology. Only build what you need when you need it. Micromanaging our funds like this is mostly important only in the early game. It gets way easier after only a few thousand sims move in. In fact, it's impossible to run out of money in city skylines unless we build way more stuff early on than our city's tax revenues can maintain. So in the beginning, we can win a lot by building only as much stuff as we need. So what stuff do we absolutely need to get sims to come in and pay us taxes for the rest of their lives? There are three basic services. Roads, water, and electricity. Once we build these, we'll set up our zones, start the clock, and the Sims are moving! So, let's get started with roads. First, we'll extend Broadway from Main Avenue to the eastern edge of our plan area. To do that, we'll click on roads, and then the two-lane road tool. We're using 12 by 12 blocks, so we'll need eight blocks to extend it half a mile. This is an aesthetic choice on my part, but rather than extending east from Main Avenue for 96 units, I'm going to go out 24 units and build east to west. I decided to build all of my streets either east to west or south to north, so that all the street lights end up on the same side of each street. Next, we'll build a paved block of Market Street, 12 units out, since it's one of our main roads too. And 4th Street over here where our temporary highway connection will be. Now we'll switch over to our two-lane gravel road tool to build Smith Street parallel to Broadway. Now let's fill in our numbered streets. 12 units works out really well because it's the maximum length of a network segment in city skylines. Finally, let's extend Water Street three blocks west or 36 units so we have access to the lakeshore over here for our water system. Before we move on, let's connect the highway to its temporary end here at 4th Street. First, we'll switch over to our two-lane one-way road tool. Next, we'll go out 12 units since this will be a permanent part of 4th Street. Then, we could switch over to our curved road tool and complete this section with a nice curve, but the game doesn't always like that. So we can just fill in this section with a straight segment, since the angles diverge less than 45 degrees, and this is only a temporary connection, so we don't mind if it doesn't look perfect. Why do we care if this angle is less than 45 degrees? Well, that's because vehicles don't have to slow down for angles of less than 45 degrees. It's important to remember this rule of city skylines since it helps us keep traffic flowing smoothly. Now for the southbound side, which I'm going to plug into 4th Street right here. Let's switch back to the curved road tool. 
Again, we want to make sure the angle is no more than 45 degrees, so traffic entering the highway doesn't have to slow down. This is easy here since Vanilla City Skylines requires angles to be at least 45 degrees at any intersection. So this 90 degree intersection will cause the game to force a 45 degree angle here no matter what. All we have to do is line our road up with the guideline from the highway and voila, a nice smooth curve. Keep in mind that this highway entrance to our city is temporary. When our city is super small like this and we only have this one highway, this is perfectly fine. Once we build up to 750 sims, I can buy the city square to the south and I'll cut this highway back and have it connected to Market Street down here instead of this connection up here with 4th Street. One last thing, let's set the names for our streets. And then we'll set up stop signs so our traffic on our main roads isn't interrupted by traffic from our side streets. A quick way to set up stop signs is to select a street and then click the priority road bubble. If we switch to our routes info view and then click on junctions, we see this puts a stop sign at every street that intersects. We can also add and remove stop signs by hand from here. I'll change this four-way stop to a two-way here at Main Avenue and Broadway and then I'll add stop signs on Smith Street here to keep traffic moving on 4th Street and the highway. Now that we have roads, we need water. We'll start off by building a pipe under Broadway to 7th Street. And then down here where we'll eventually extend 7th Street to Water Street, and then across to the end of Water Street here. I like to build all of my water pipes underneath the roads because it usually looks a little neater and feels more realistic. Finally, we'll build a four unit section of pipe from the lakeshore where we'll place our first water drain. Let's talk for a second about water drains. We have a choice here since we have the Green Cities expansion between the standard water drain pipe and the less polluting eco water outlet. Since we're trying to conserve cash as much as possible, we'll go with the standard drain since it costs 40% less to build and a full third less in upkeep with double the capacity of the more eco friendly option. I'd rather go green here, but the eco water outlet won't eliminate all the pollution anyway. To go truly green, we need the eco water treatment plant, which won't be unlocked until we have 30,000 in population. Since the Green Cities expansion offers a way of cleaning up the lake eventually, keeping costs down seems to be the right way to go here, which will make our city more profitable that much sooner. Now we need a water source. The water pumping station costs about 30% less to build and the same to maintain as a water tower, with twice the capacity. A water pumping station does have its drawbacks here though. First, these are lakes, and not rivers like we have on most maps. Since lakes don't flow, the raw sewage we're dumping from our water drain pipe will just stay here in Spring Lake. So if we pump water from the same lake as our drain, as the help graphic here shows, we'll draw pollution into our water system and poison our sims. So this lake is a no-go zone. Second, it'll cost us as much as we'd save just to build a water pipe for a pumping station, about a thousand credits, even on the next closest lake. When we add in the cost of power lines, then the cheaper option is definitely the water tower, since we can build it anywhere that won't be affected by ground pollution from industry. So let's extend a pipe here to the center of this block off of 7th Street, and then we can drop a water tower right on top in this little square of unzonable area. Now for our last basic service, electricity. Our only options at the beginning of the game are a wind turbine or a coal power plant. I usually favor wind turbines since we can build three for the price of one coal plant, they don't pollute, and they are super cheap to maintain. But we have a problem on this map. We have very few places with much wind, at least on land. This is probably the windiest place available up here, and I can only get at most five or six megawatts. Over here closer to my city, I can get at most three or four megawatts. Unless we can get at least six megawatts from our wind turbines, the electricity generated is actually much more expensive in upkeep per megawatt than it is for coal power. And even then, it still costs more than twice as much to build. If all we get is four megawatts, then wind costs even more. When we add in the cost of power lines, at several thousand credits to get the six megawatts, and then the fact that some days we might not have wind and therefore we won't have electricity, then the pollution from dependable coal seems pretty tolerable. So to start out, we'll build a coal power plant right over here on Broadway, on the edge of town in our initial industrial neighborhood. 
This will keep our ground pollution contained to this one area. When we eventually redevelop this neighborhood as residential and commercial, the coal power plant costs only 3,800 credits to move, and the ground pollution will disappear over time. Now one last thing we could do to complete our power grid is to build power lines to make sure that we have electricity for our water system. However, if we drag out a set of power lines, we see a cost of 1440 to connect along Broadway to 7th Street, another 480 to connect past our water tower, and another 800 or so to connect along Water Street to our drain. Since we plan on developing all this land between our power plant and our water infrastructure, it seems silly to spend that much on power lines just to demolish them a little bit later. So let me show you a trick to connect all of this without power lines. The secret lies in zoning. Electricity in city skylines can be transmitted by power lines or it can be passed along by buildings, which is what we see with these light blue blobs here. If we only zone along a narrow strip of land, it will force the Sims to build there, which will pass electricity from our coal power plant all across our city. So let's start out with industrial zones. We'll skip this spot since it already has power and zone a tiny bit here. Then we'll zone a strip here. Next, I want to leave this block open for now to keep our ground and noise pollution from the industrial area away from the residential zones. For the time being though, I'll put a small commercial zone in the middle so it can pass electricity. Now we'll zone a strip of residential along Broadway, leaving this space open for commercial near Main Avenue, and zone here to pass electricity to our water tower. Then we'll run some more residential down Water Street, leaving gaps for 9th, 10th, and 11th streets. Finally, I'll put a commercial zone here to make sure water gets passed from our water tower to this residential area. There's only one last thing to do before we start the clock. Even after a bunch of sims move in, our power and water systems will still produce a lot more than we need. So let's go into our budget panel and slide our electricity and water budgets to 50% to save money on upkeep. So our first milestone here is 380 sims. And we still almost have 30,000 credits in reserve. It's always good to have some spare cash in case of emergency, like if we forget to build or connect something critical. That way we don't have to start over from scratch. Let's start the clock and get our first Sims to move in. I'll switch over to the electricity info view so we can watch the power spread as our zones develop. Hopefully the electricity will spread fast enough that none of our new buildings will start flashing red or get abandoned. All right, we now have electricity, and now we have water too. Now that we have electricity everywhere, let's zone the rest of our residential and commercial zones here to get enough sims to move in. Keep an eye on the demand meters here so we know when to zone more industrial to make sure there are enough jobs for our sims. We don't want to overzone industrial though, since it uses a lot more water and electricity and produces a lot of pollution that we'll have to deal with later. We won't need to build any additional streets or infrastructure right now either. What we have will be more than enough to reach a population of 380 sims. And now our income is about to catch up to our expenses. Our city is now making money!
There we go. We've reached our first milestone as a little hamlet. So now we can adjust our tax rates or take out a loan, and we can build medical clinics, landfills, elementary schools, recycling centers, and community schools. We need to build one of those right away. And another one we want to build right away. Which ones are which? In the next episode, I'll share answers, and more I'll tell you about in just a second. Right now, I want you to remember two key takeaways. First, lean construction methodology. Only build what you need when you need it. We stuck to our city plan from episode one, but we just built a small part of it to set up our three basic services, roads, water, and electricity. This saved us a ton of money on both building and upkeep, bringing our city up to profitability in no time. Second, we learned to calculate the full cost of alternatives at the beginning. Sometimes a map's climate or the cost of water pipes and power lines negate the savings of cheaper options like water pumps and wind turbines. It just depends on the geography of the map. Now that we have our city started off on the right foot, what should we build in our next episode? And more importantly, how do we keep growing without running out of money? Subscribe so you can learn how without having to become an accountant. So long.